in the previous video, we saw how we can use unit testing to test our normal .NET classes, that is our business objects as well as data access layer. Now, one of the important uh, component of our uh, project or of our application is user interfaces, and the, and you can have different kind of user interfaces like uh, must be you know a, a ASP.NET application or must be a Windows application or a WPF application or Silverlight application. So in this video, we will see that how we can uh, do testing, you know, for uh, UI part of your project. The biggest problem with uh, testing user interfaces is the complications involved with the UI technology. Now, every UI technology has its own way of doing things, and it is very difficult to replicate those infrastructure. In other words, uh, for example, uh, let's say that if you take ASP.NET uh, application or the ASP.NET behind code, you need to ensure that you create the HTTP object, uh, HTTP context object, you need to create the response object, the request object, the application objects, and then only probably you can go and invoke the button clicks of the ASP.NET UI. So, you know the the infrastructure of every user interface technology is very different for example if you go to wpf you know then things are very different there is a xaml file there and the behind code is also a bit different so it is very difficult to go and accommodate each of these user interface infrastructure and you know probably do testing on them so the best way to test a ui um, a ui is you know by doing a record and a play in other words you just go and record your test and then you go and play your test uh, and then do the assertions so in order to test the user interface, what Microsoft has given to us is the Coded UI test. By using the Coded UI test, you can go and record your test steps, and then you can go and play your test uh, test steps, you know, later on whenever you want. So what we'll do now is, let's let's pick up a very simple application. It must be we can pick up the calculator application which comes with the uh, Windows operating system, and let's try to go and record a simple test on our calculator application. So what we'll do is we'll go and record a simple test on the calculator application which ship which comes with the windows operating system so probably what we can do is we can go and record a test uh, you know wherein uh, the user comes and he, he puts the first number then he, he presses the addition sign and then he presses the second number and then he presses equal to so let's go and do the simple recording using the coded ui test and let's try to uh, play that play these steps you know later on uh, in a in an automated way now the most important thing you know when you are doing coded UI test or I'll say the record and play test is the planning part. If you do not plan well, you know, then definitely you know your coded UI test or your recordings what we have done, you know, can go completely waste, you know, when your user interface changes or, or when there is a change in the application. So what I will recommend everyone is that first do the planning part of it and then afterwards start recording. So what do I mean by planning part of it? So let me go here and open my notepad. And uh, let me first, you know, write down what I want to record. Okay, or I'll say, let me write down the steps. You know, uh, write down the steps. You know, what I'm going to record. You know, when I run the calculator application. So step one, I need to first invoke the calculator. Right, means I need to go and click on Start Run and run the calculator application. Step two. I will need we need to enter I'll say enter first number right step 3 enter operation that is plus subtraction or addition whatever it is okay step 4 enter the second number step 5 press equal to sign so that we can see the results step 6 check the results are as per test case so the first step you know what I will advise in record and play is that go and you know basically put down the steps you know what you want to record or put down your uh, put down the breakdown of the steps you know so that you can you can record in a logical manner so now you can see that here we have six steps. The first thing is we are going to go and invoke the calculator. In other words, we will click on start run and probably type calc.exe. Second, I will go and enter the first number. Third, I will go and enter the operation. Fourth, I will go and enter the second number. After that, I will press equal to. Now from step one to five, right, it is nothing but you are actually going and running the test case. And step six at the end of the day is nothing but 
whatever results you see right on the calculator you would like to go and check if that results matches your expectation now one question which you would probably put put to me is why did i write down the steps why don't we just go and record the whole thing in one go now if you record the whole action in one recording and let's say tomorrow i want to change the operation of the recording in other words i want to go and change step 3 for example let's say that you recorded this whole action with a plus sign and tomorrow i want to go and put the minus sign or i want to go and put you know the the multiplication sign then how do i go about it so the best way would be to go and record each of these actions as logical steps and whenever you want to go and change any individual step you can go and re-record only that step in other words if i want to go and uh, you know probably change the operation i can just go and record this step i don't have to go and record all the steps right so one of the important part you know which we need which we need to understand is when we which we need to understand when we do the ui recording is or the ui test recording is that record in logical steps you know rather than recording the whole thing in one go so let me go and save this file so that um, go and save this file in my desktop here say calculator steps okay. right so now that we have done our planning now it is time to go and record each of these steps individually so let's go and open our visual studio so let's click on start and let's start visual studio and in visual studio we will go and create a simple test project and inside the test project we will go and add the coded ui test which will help us to do the record and play on user interface so let me go and create a new test project always remember that either you want to create a unit test or you want to create a load test or you want to create a coded ui test stored procedure testing whatever it is you have to create a test project a test project is a collection of different kind of tests so I'll just keep the name as it is test project 3 let me press ok so there's a project created now let's go to the solution explorer and you can see that by default as we said previously also that it creates a unit test so let's go and delete this uh, unit test file what we have here because we are now interested more in a record and play test or I'll say the coded UI test and now let's right click on this project and let's go and create a coded UI test so you can see that I have now right click on the menu and I'm going to go and click on the coded UI test menu now you can see that uh, basically uh, there is a there is a nice dialog box here stating that uh, do you want to record actions or do you want to use the existing action recording so currently we'll just select the first option I'll talk about the second option you know when I talk about Microsoft test manager so currently you can just safely exclude this second option and let's click the first option and let's press OK now the time you press OK, you can see that there's a small window which has popped up here at your down below your uh, window system tray and it has a couple of buttons here. One is you know you start recording, one is you can use assertions or you can go and generate your code, right? So uh, for now, you know, we are only concerned with this, uh, this button here, the red button that is we only want to record for now, okay? Now before I start recording, uh, let's go back again to our notepad, you know, where we had done some planning, right? So we had planned that we are going to record this complete uh, test in six steps. So there are going to be six logical recordings. So the first step or the first recording which we should be doing here now is to invoke the calculator, uh, you know, and uh, basically uh, ensure that the calculator is running, right? So in order to start the recording, what you need to do is you need to go and click on the start recording button here. So you can see that my mouse is now on the start recording button. Click on it and then now start recording so now my first step is I need to go and uh, run the calculator application so I'm going to go and click on start here so you can see that I have clicked on the start button now the time I click on start button right it starts recording each of my actions for example I've clicked on start button right and I'm going to go and type calculator now you can see that the time I have typed calculator here you can see at the right hand side uh, on the system tray it has recorded saying that you have typed calculator in the start search text box right and now the time I press enter you can see that at the right hand side he has said that okay the calculator.exe has been launched you know from the system tray uh, from the system root slash system 32 and uh, the calc.exe been launched you know from the start run uh, command prompt now this is our first step you know which you want to record right 
Now, so what I'll do is because my all my steps are recorded, I'm going to go and just pause the recording, right? And uh, I would like to go and see that uh, what kind of steps have been recorded uh, for the first step. Now, in order to see the recordings, you can see at the right hand side there is a button here saying "Show Recorded Steps," right? So if you click on the "Show Recorded Steps," it actually says that uh, now you can see there are some errors here. I'll not say errors, but uh, at least some warning saying that some of the act mouse actions were not recorded. So that's a bad sign, right? So what I'll do is let me go and delete all these actions and let me re-record again because I saw that the actions were not recorded properly. So I'm going to go and record this action again. So what I'll do is I'm going to go and close this Calci program. Now I'm going to go and click on this resume recording again. Now I'll click on start. So you can see that the start button has been clicked and my uh, right hand side menu also shows that the start button is clicked. Let me type Calci. So you can see that he has also recorded the type Calci. I'm going to say enter and he also recorded that this Calci.exe is launched from the system root. So now let me again go pause here and now let me see if my steps are recorded. So I can see that yes, now my recordings are proper. I don't see any kind of warnings or errors. It says that Calci.exe will be launched you know, from this folder and I'm happy about it. So we have recorded our first step that is this one invoke the calculator right now once you do the recording that right, the next thing is you have to go and generate the code for it so you can see there's a third button on the on the same small window called as generate code so let's click on this and let's give a nice name here saying uh, calculator invoked calculator I'll say so that I can later relate that what this actions were invoked calculator and I will say add and generate code. We'll go to the code later on. For now, we'll just first complete our recordings. All right, so there you can see that it has generated the code and it has again come back to my recordings here. So now let's go back and see the second step. Our second step says that enter the first number. So now let's again go. Again, press on this resume recording. Now let's go and click on the calculator screen, right, so that we can go and start recording the actions. So now you can see that the time I click on the calculator screen, right, you can see there's a small icon here saying that this area is now getting recorded. Can you see this icon here? I hope the zoom uh, will help you to see that. So I'm going to click uh, on this calculator and I'm going to say, okay, let me first put the first number, one, and let me go again and pause, right. So let me see my steps here. Now you can see that because I clicked on the calculator title bar twice, it's showing me that this click has been done twice. So what I'll do is for now, I'll just go and delete one of those clicks because I really do not want uh, two clicks happening on the calculated title bar. So good. So that's our second step. Enter the first number, right? So let's again go and generate code. Entered first number. Add and generate code. Now let's go and see the third step. Enter the operations. So now again press on recording, click on the calculator and I'm going to press the plus sign, pause the recording, yes, generate code, entered, operation, add and generate, done, third step, enter the second number, okay, start recording again, click on the calculator. Let's say I press 6 and again pause it, ensure the actions are properly recorded, go to my generate code, say entered second number, add and generate. Now let me go to my fifth step, press equal to, write, so again resume recording, click on the calculator title bar press equal to now you can see that 1 plus 6 is 7 so that's right again let me go and pause the recordings that's right equal to entered generate code pressed equal to add and generate now let's go to the final step we also need to check you know if the results are as per the test case or not so in order to check the results so till now what we have done is we have actually gone ahead and we have recorded the first five recordings, right? So we have recorded, you know, the invoking of the calculator, 
we entered the first number, entered the operation, entered the second number, pressed equal to. Now finally, you know, every test case needs to also check, you know, if the test case has passed or not. So the first five steps, you know, is just execution. And the last step is where, you know, the checking happens. Now, in order to check, you know, basically, if the results are proper or not, right, uh, in a coded UI test, you can see that there is one more button here saying assertions, this circle button, right? So click on that, move your assertion. Now, don't leave your mouse. You have to keep pressing. You can see that I'm doing that. And uh, so you can see that I started from here and I moved slowly towards the calculator program. And you can see now uh, there's a red uh, boundary scene here, sorry, blue boundary scene here. And this blue blue boundary, what it says is that, you know, you can go and check values, you know, uh, from this section of the UI. So in other words, you can see that I can use other sections of the UI also to check the values. But at this moment, those are not important. The actual data is over here. So I'll say yes. You know, whenever, you know, the test case passes or fails, I'm going to decide, you know, from the value which is displayed in this white area. So I leave the mouse there. And now what the coded UI test does is it it actually goes and captures that area, you know, gives a name to that area and basically also gives you the property, you know, where the value is. So you can see that basically there's a text property here, which he has captured. So I'm going to say here, yes, this test case passes when I add assertion, when, you know, this value here is equal to seven. And I'll say generate code again, check test case and add and generate. So we have recorded all the test steps from one to five. And also we have recorded the sixth step, you know, where we are, we are checking the results, right? Now, every time we were recording and generating the code, right? At the back end, what was happening is the coded UI test actually generated code for us. So let me now go to my, to my visual studio here. And you can see that he has created a file here called as a coded UI test one.cs. And also he has created a file here called as UI map .ui .test, which has a behind code, which also has a designer.cs. I'll not go into these files for now, but for now, just go to the coded UI test one.cs. And you can see over here, whatever actions we were recording, right? All those actions are now, you know, C sharp functions. So for example, when we recorded the invoked calculator, you know, this is the function. When we entered the first number, this is the function. When we entered the operation, this is the uh, plus sign. When we entered the second number, you know, so you can see basically each of our recording, you know, are converted to functions on the behind code, right? So now what we'll do is we'll see, we'll go and build this. Now let me go and close my coded UI test builder because my recording is almost done. Also, let me go and stop this calculator here. And what I would like to now do is I would like to go and run this test case and see that if it really works or not, right? So in order to run the test case, again, click on test windows, test view. And you can see that we have our test here called as a coded UI test method one, which is nothing but this test. So let's go and run this test case. So I'm going to say right click run. Now the, now the time you click on run, the first thing is you have to go and leave your mouse because after this, what will happen is the coded UI test will take control of your, uh, of your windows and he will start running, you know, the calculator application. So let me just click on run and let me move my hand aside. Now you can see that, uh, the test case has started running. So the first thing is he has to go and invoke the calculator program. So that that's done. Second, he has to type the first number. Even that is done second number and then finally he has to press equal to and then he has to check you know if the data is proper or not so you can see that basically it has passed the test case and it has ran our test case so you saw basically that how we recorded our test case by using the code UI test and then you know uh, how it actually went ahead and ran our test case right so the first thing you know for code UI test is that you need to first go and plan this is very essential you know uh, if you go and record in all in one go you know, it's going to be very difficult later to go and change those recordings. Okay. So for example, now you can see over here, because, you know, I have recorded in a logical manner, each one of these recordings are, uh, what you call, uh, uh, logical recordings. So in other words, let's say that I want to go and change my operations. I can just go and comment this and record a new operation and invoke that operation over here. So, you know, your reusability of your 
test recording increases you know if you record them in in logical manner or i'll say if you record them in smaller steps you know that rather than recording them in one go so the first thing what you need to do is you need to go and plan your testing okay once you plan your testing then you can go and start recording them logically uh, separately step by step and then finally you can go and run them so i hope that you enjoyed this video in this video what we did is we were trying to understand that how we can use coded ui test you know to do automation testing now in the coming two videos you know we are going to go and talk something more advanced about the coded ui test because currently what i shown you is is just a glimpse uh, you know I'll, or i'll say it's it's a very basic thing where we went ahead and we recorded it but in the coming video what we'll do is the first thing you know we, we would like to first go and provide uh, our own data as inputs so currently if you see right the data is hard coded in other words the the one and the six value right the number one and number two values are hard coded so probably we would like to go and change those values so how do we do that second uh, what we would also like to do is that we would probably like to you know take these values from a database or from a csv file so in the coming up videos you know we will go more in depth into coded ui test and we'll try to understand how we can customize coded ui test now whatever video you have seen right is just a glimpse of uh, what we have done so in case you are interested in our video package uh, you can go to our site that is www.quest1.com you can call on this number and you can ask the the complete dvd package what we have so in this dvd package what we have done is basically we have covered almost everything what a dot net developer wants so right from basics of uh, asp dot net object oriented programming sql server to new technologies like wcf silverlight link azure entity framework uh, we also have uml uh, architecture estimation project management there is a complete invoicing project end to end which is covered so that you can get a better feel of how to actually create projects in a systematic manner uh, we have covered server products you know both for sharepoint 2007 as well as for 2010 we have a lot of best practices video on sql server etc so this complete package you know you can get from www.quest1.com if you are interested and you can call on this number and uh, you can ask for the rates it's it's a very uh, decent rate what we have on the same in the same way uh, you know as compared to the videos we also have one more uh, product with us that is our interview question books so we have uh, different kinds of interview question books you know right from from dot net interview questions to sql server interview questions uh, sharepoint interview questions biz talk interview questions etc so in case you are interested in the books part you can you can call on these numbers as per your location so you can see these numbers on the board at this moment so i hope that um, you keep enjoying the videos uh, you keep seeing our uh, site and i hope that you gain more knowledge thank you very much